Welcome to the National Instruments AWR um, RFPA Forum. Um, we've got quite a few speakers lined up. Um, hopefully you've all seen the agenda and I'm going to try and cut my session sl slightly fast because the second speaker today will be one of my old colleagues, Steve Cripps. So I want to give him the benefit of a little <laughs> Those of you who know Steve know that he needs a little bit of extra time to um, present his material. So, so but before we... <laughs> sorry. So before we kick off, I just want to bring everybody up to date with what um, we're doing with the AWR design environment. And before I do so, I will sit down because I promised Tommy I would be sitting down. As you can see, I'm completely at ease being filmed. Okay, so between version 11 and version 12, we've actually encompassed uh, a large amount of work with um, primarily directed at the PA design groups and the the range of new technology we've added to the design environment, I think is pretty impressive. I'll be giving you this morning, a very brief overview. Hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate a couple of things at the back end of this presentation, so it won't all be uh, PowerPoints. Um, the first thing that we need to talk about is we've added a new general MDIF format file, which is really important for storing data. And I'll describe that a little bit more in detail further on. We've added a new load pool wizard which has been challenging to some engineers because of the new technology we've added. And I can see some grins in the audience. Uh, we've added many new load pool measurements to complement the new load pool wizard. With our partner AMCAD Engineering, we've added a, a new improved interface to the STAN nonlinear analysis tool and you'll be getting a, an extended overview of that from Stefan Delia from AMCAD Engineering later on this morning, but I'll just introduce you to it. Whilst we've been working with nonlinear stability analysis, we've added a new G-probe, which supports I our own nonlinear stability approaches internally, as well as being used by the AMCAD software. Um, from a marketing and a presentational point of view, We've been doing a lot of work now with our partners, and AWR have been very successful, and obviously some of these partners will be presenting at this forum this morning. And just as a last addition, m probably more appropriate for complex MMIC designs, but we've added more DRC and LV LVS um, processes for our MMIC and complex PCB designs. Moving on to the load pool, as you can see, we have at last supported swept power. This is the biggest change we've made. So we can have multiple gammas, multiple powers, and indeed multiple parameters associated with these sweeps. And with that, um, with those, sorry, extra degrees of freedom or um, yeah, extra degrees of freedom, of course, comes more complex measurements to capture this data and display this data in convenient form for the engineers to analyze what's going on in the PA structures. Simultaneously, we've, been su we've added support for the Maori, SPL, and CST file formats and the focus load pool. We're also negotiating with these companies on yet another load pool format, uh, our generalized MDIF format which we believe we've solved some uh, major problems of compacting data and making the uh, files more uh, transportable between uh, measurement systems and simulation systems. And on that happy note, 
here's a, just a very brief overview of the structure. Now, if anybody's interested um, because they have their own instrumentation and they wish to pre present data, sorry, prepare data or construct data in the format, please get in, in touch with me and I can supply you details. But essentially, the new um, GMDIF file format supports an AB wave style of um, measurement. So in other words, we're just f capturing voltages and currents at specific nodes. We're making no assumptions about what's going on. We're simply capturing measured data. And we're forming into the, uh, we call this an AB wave format, in parallel with all the nonlinear uh, modeling activity that's going on. So here is a brief, that's basically A1, A2, DC voltages, DC currents, and from that you can derive data such as power added efficiency. Since this is swept over power, you can recover the an intercept point of a specific um, power level. And indeed, extract from that data the typical figures of merit that you would be using pr in the previous load pool data files. Now we still support those in this new format where we've now got derived data such as power in the load, um, power gain, power added efficiency. So your file there is really just con is a container for um, d what I would call figures of merit or derived data. N that not you can't put them directly into a simulator. So those two f these are the two forms of data we're supporting. The AB wave format has a form of a template header, which you can see here. Um, so we describe the format of the data with a V for valid data point and M for missing. So we don't have this embarrassing situation where you have a large file actually punctured with lots of missing data, taking an ASCII space in the, in the file. So we present the format and then fill the data accordingly. So you can see here's a list of vectors and scalar numbers. And it's, um, we've got other ideas in improving this, but we're, we're trying to move this, reduce the number of megabytes needed, which helps for the transfer of data uh, by email, et cetera, et cetera, and swapping in, uh, information between your colleagues. Now, the load pool wizard. Um, <coughs> now, for those of you have used V10, V sorry, V9, V10, etc. Low pole wizard. You'll know that it is a a couple of button push. You have a schematic on that schematic. You have a tuner associated with that schematic. You have at least one valid measurement. That's all the V11 and behind load pull wizards require to construct the simulation, store the data, and then perform a load pull contour graphics um, process. So it was easy to get your head round, um, and it was very popular. And if you wanted to look at load pool under compression, you associated the XDB um, element, place that into the schematic. With it being in the schematic, one could conduct a specific load pool contour set for a particular amount of gain compression. We've thrown that out, okay? The new methodology is closer to the bench style. You're in the bench, your laboratory, you're making your measurements, you end up with a vast array of data, then you proceed and do some post-analysis of that data. So let's take um, 0 dBm gain compression, whereas the XdB block within the schematic was attempting to drive the simulator to find a specific compression point. Now we're talking about a data extraction. We have gain, sorry, we have power in, power out, we see the compression, and now we've got a pure data analysis process, which is faster and more reliable than using, uh, trying to extract this information using a simulator in an optimization style routine, or a data searching routine, I should say. So hopefully, um, the whole process has become much more sophisticated. Now, naturally, the sophistication brings more complexity, and uh, we're in pro we're in discussion with all the all, all the guys, or sorry, all the parameter um, engineers and partners who have been exploring this this new w low pole wizard, and it is a moving process. We're improving it all the time. We're getting some very good feedback 
generally, it's been very positive. Um, not too many screams of anguish. Okay, so the note to just give you a, f a flavor of the new approach. When you're, I'll do a quick demonstration at the at the end of this, and I better. I did promise I was going to be really quick. <laughs> When you're using the load pool script, the script creates a template schematic. F that schematic is completely editable by the user. You can change the names of elements. Naturally, you will want to change the transistor. So you can actually simulate using that schematic. But it's just a placeholder, and it ensures that the furniture that's placed into, or the elements that are placed into that schematic, adhere to the rules. And there are words of warning up here. Sorry about the the quality, but uh, when you um, when I supply the powerpoints to you guys, you'll better see um, get a much better idea of what's going on here. So, okay, schematic created from that schematic, and you've made your adjustments. Then you want to use the low pull wizard in anger. So you can see here. Well, sorry, you can't see here, but it says low pull there, and then you've you use the low pull entry point. You can adjust the number of harmonics at the source, the number of harmonics at the load. At each uh, instance of the harmonics at load and source, you will get a plot such as this. Sorry, that's the interface, and you'll see the gamma points for that specific test. Carry on through, adding as many gamma points and placing them around the Smith chart as required. Uh, uh, Nominate vol uh, the measurement points within your schematic. You may have some hierarchy in there. You may have voltage meters and current meters, which are down in the hierarchy, closer to the, the channel of the transistor, for instance. Um, f these enable you, to this uh, interface enables you to do that. Having finished that, before you hit the simulation button, you will see at the bottom here, well, I can see it, um, you will be warned about the number of simulations w that will be necessary to conduct the simulation. Sorry, to conduct the complete, let's call it design of experiments for want of a better word. So beware, if you've got 20 powers, 64 gamma as F0, 38 gamma, it's very quick, you can very quickly achieve several hundred thousand simulations. So keep an eye on the amount of simulations. Okay. When the data has been measured or simulated and stored away, then one can access this data. And to give an example here, we are looking at the power added efficiency and output power contours here. The blue is the output power. The green is the, uh, is the efficiency. Now we are actually in the swept power regime. We've s on we have two um, graphs side by side in this view here. This graph is used simply to move a marker and run up through the index of powers that you drove the low-pulse simulations. And you'll see that a little bit more clearly in the moment. So you can, you can actually um, access the different data. The same can be done here for tuning. Um, here is a very simple example. Uh, by the way, all, all these projects will be available for people to test out with the new Lopal Wizard. But here we have a very simple matching circuit. It's not a real matching circuit. It's there by way of a, something for you to explore and understand what's going on. And we can plot out gain, power added efficiency on here. We can tune on here. You can see the widths and lengths of the matching circuit change. And you can see how the dots, i.e., the uh, the impedances presented to the transistor move around the Smith chart regime within the area of interest. Okay, what another um, important attribute has been the addition of we can now de-embed the data. So having uh, measured the load pool data at some outside of the device reference point, if you have an accurate model for the um, package leads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can use that model to de-embed. So here are the gammas played a uh, place at the output, and we are plotting the gammas actually at the device plane. 
not only can we see the gammas, we can see the voltages and currents externally and internally. And of course, this all depends on you having a good model of your package, getting from the output network to the intrinsic transistor. As I mentioned before, we've added Sorry, this is going to be a rush. We've added STAN, uh, which is a nonlinear stability analysis. I won't talk about that anymore. We've actually proved there are quite a few general improvements we've made to the design environment. For instance, a con uh, consistent and intuitive UI. So we're trying to make, it doesn't matter where you are in the design environment at the moment, electromagnetic, nonlinear, linear, whatever the GUIs or the UI are identical in their form and their fill to the user to make it easier to, uh, for the uh, for navigating and setting up um, different aspects of the simulation. Okay. <sighs> to I will do one demonstration as I did promise regardless of now I think I've successfully running out of time but just to give you a feel Okay, let's, so what we have here is we have load pool data for power added efficiency and output power. This graph here is simply being used as a tool to change an index into the data. So as I move the marker up and down, sorry, I need to re-simulate, it's got stale data. Don't worry about the warnings, the warnings are the w the warnings are the warnings are we've made calculations about overlap of power and power added efficiency and they have failed so we've got which is not surprising so as you see as i drop the power down you can see the contours move around we've also added the capability can you see now there's a red region and the red region is a specific criteria, so much power, so much power added efficiency. So within that region, apply that impedance at that input power level, uh, you will reach the requirements of your particular design. That is the extent of my um, presentation. Sorry, because I'd, like I'd like to move forward. Okay, any, any questions? Good. If you would like, <laughs> if you sorry, I didn't mean that, that's not a... <laughs> Sorry, that's um, not a pejorative word. Say so good. It's uh, but if you would like to see extended demonstrations, please come along to the um, the booth, and uh, hopefully somebody, either myself or one of my colleagues, will be able to show you in greater depth these new capabilities of the design tool. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>